Hey everyone, Daniel Ramsey here with My Outdesk. I'm excited. Uh, this is gonna be crazy. Yep. Uh, so first interview ever with Pat Cleary. Yes. From Napio. So if you're if you're not first in in history, first ever. First for you too. Yes. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I was okay. trying to be gracious. So yeah, I like I like that. Yeah. I like that. Um, well, so today um, we're gonna just talk everything PEO. Yeah. And yeah. your experience, this organization why it's a value to the members, mm -hmm. um, you know, talk industry, plus just get a kind of a bird eye view of exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and uh, hopefully it's super valuable. As you guys know, we provide high caliber talent to, P to growing PEOs. If you need talent, that's what we do. Um, Pat, let's start with who you are, man. Oh yeah, how much time do you got? We <laughs> <laughs> How far back do you want me to start? Well, yeah, no, uh, so I've been in Washington a really long time. Yep. Uh, I like to say I'm part of the problem for those of you that, uh, you know, uh, follow what's going on in Washington. Uh, so I've been here for a long time. I've moved in and out of government in a, in, in a bunch of different policy roles. Uh, I was a federal mediator for uh, mm. five years, which is where the white hair came from. Mm. Um, and then uh, I was a lobbyist for the National Association of Manufacturers and, and uh, lobbied on all their HR issues and um, you know, moved through the ranks over there after, mm -hmm. uh, over, after about 10 years. And then uh, got a call from a headhunter about, uh, about coming here. So, uh, and come on about, over. About eight years ago, yeah. Come yeah. on over. Well, you know, something that I like about your journey is the growth within Napio. I'm a yeah. big grow revenue guy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we had talked earlier and you said that since you've been here, Napio had doubled. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you believe yeah is the secret sauce to that? Like why ha under your leadership have you seen your team go from 10 to 20, the revenue double? I mean, that's yeah. a big deal yeah, for, yeah, yeah, for yeah, a leader, yeah. any no, leader really. It's, it's, it's really, uh, you know, it's, it's a growth industry and uh, there's, there's a lot to, to address your question. Uh, we just, in terms of the stats, um, we track our members uh, 941s. 941 is the wage statement that you that you register with the IRS. You file right. with the IRS every year. Yep. So the aggregate 941s of our member companies in 2012 was 60 billion dollars. 60. 60 billion. Wait, wait, wait. So uh, I want to break that down for people who are on the because I was mm -hmm. just with mm -hmm. uh, another PEO mm -hmm. and they had said that they are going to do more than a billion dollars in, mm -hmm. in payroll. So. Mm -hmm. Are they one sixtieth of yeah. the entire industry? They would, in twenty twelve, they would have been. Right? Okay, so, so we were, perfect. We were at sixty billion in twenty twelve, and uh, in twenty seventeen, the combined nine forty ones of our member companies was one hundred and twenty billion. So they doubled over that span. So, okay. So and you know, uh, wage inflation over that time was pr really Nothing. probably only about two percent or so a year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, you slice it. It was there's growth. It's growth, right? You know, I would say a doubling. But anyway, you slice it. Clearly, there was growth in the industry. So the size is growth in the industry. The size right now of this industry is about 120 billion dollars in payroll. Yeah, well, it's bigger now, and and that's just our members. Well, our members represent probably 90 or more percent of the industry. So uh, those those are just Napio members, um, and okay. that was 2017 numbers. So if we're in 2019, that number's probably grown another you know 20 uh, 20 percent. Yeah. 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 So what's the overall size? Like I'm, I'm thinking like ADP, um, yeah. these other large yeah. PEOs. Like well, so ADP is north of a half a million uh, employees that they've got in their in their PEO. Uh, Paychecks is a little bit uh, behind them. Uh, Trinet, uh, you know, several hundred thousand. Uh, so the biggest companies are pretty sizable, and then we've got a whole bunch of companies that are medium or medium size or smaller. And some of them are in little niche markets. Some of them are in um, uh, verticals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so they, they will just work in certain industries. Uh, yeah. We have two actually. They're just in trucking, for example. I like um, that. So, uh, but they get to a specialty in that, and they, they get to be pretty good at that. But I was just wa watching a, the uh, the what was it called? It was called the Future of Work, mm. and and it was a you know a Vice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it, sh it shows um, a trucking company who is automating yeah. their drivers. Yeah. So I wonder for yeah. those two PEOs if they know that's coming yeah. and what they're going to do. Yeah, yeah. So that's <laughs> that's another podcast. Right? <laughs> In that, uh, you know, for the driving public. Yes. Uh, they want to see somebody in the cab. I agree. Right. So. We have autonomous vehicles, obviously. Like we're yep. down that road, yep. but we're a long way from not having people 
well, in you know uh, in uh, in cockpits in truck cabs etc et yeah agreed but clearly the technology is there for for airplanes and trucks the technology is there well be your next podcast right? yeah maybe I mean <laughs> they, what they're saying is the future of how everything that we do is changing yeah and yeah. in 10 years yeah. and when our kid my kid I have little girls so mm -hmm. when my little girls enter the workforce it's mm -hmm. not going to be the same way we did right right that's right. That's right. But yeah, so again, this is a topic for our next podcast. <laughs> so I spent uh, a couple of years in the Labor Department's policy office, right. you know, uh, and, and then again, working on a lot of these issues when I was at the National Association of Manufacturers is um, obviously that was the fear during the, uh, the Industrial Revolution. Right. right? And right. the Luddites broke the machines because they were going to, you know, take the jobs away. That's right. And it led to the biggest explosion in the global economy that we with that seen. they had seen to date, right. right? And the same thing's happening here, right? And so sure. as machines or technology replace people, productivity increases. Massively. And people go into the business of making that software or selling that software or servicing or doing other jobs ancillary to that. Right. But it has always led to an explosion in jobs and the economy. And it will again. So you're an optimist is I'm what optimist. I'm hearing. I'm I'm, I'm, but, but it's optimism based on data, <laughs> okay. not based on conjecture. Right, but it's not an opinion for no, you. No, no, it's, it's actually happened over history and over time. So we started the question and then I took you Can we get you back off. to PEOs? Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I took you off this weird um, tangent. But I do want to under, understand why the this organization has doubled. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's so, the most important question so, for anybody. Yes, yes. So I think really it's it's me, really. I think it's, 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 no, no, okay. So, okay, here's the real Is this based reason. on data? The, no, 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 that's just puffery. Yeah, puffery. okay, good. So, uh, uh, yeah, so here's the thing. Uh, I, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a leaf on the stream, right? I'm riding along this, uh, this curve uh, uh, of a great and sort of dynamic industry. Yeah. And my view of this, uh, there are a couple things at work. First of all, I always say there, there are, are two big uh, uh, tailwinds we've got, two, two big, uh, uh, big forces pushing us yep. uh, forward. First is that the pace of regulation, the arc of regulation uh, will always bend up. Always, always, always. More regulation. And always. And when uh, when President Trump got elected, some of our members were a little worried because you know one of his uh, platforms was to reduce regulation. So some right. members were worried because we help small businesses comply with regulations, and and we help steer them through that those yep. shoals. And you know I said to them at the time, and this has proven to be true, that that to the extent that he has success uh, easing the federal regulatory burden, which he yep. has. Uh, those gaps get filled by states, localities, yeah. <laughs> cities <laughs> that, that, that go and fill, fill that gap. So, you're so regu the regulatory curve always, always bends up and we help members, uh, we, we help out. companies figure that out. Yeah. Right, got it. Right, so that's, that's tailwind one. Tailwind two is, as I like to say, anybody who's gotten out of uh, uh, business school, certainly in the last 20 years in this country, has had one commandment hammered into them, which is, if it's not your core business, don't do it. Outsource it, right? Don't do it. Outsource it, right? Yeah. Get somebody else to do it. So, That's right. security, travel, tech, HR, it's not your core business, outsource it. Yeah. So, we find that our last round of, of market research that we did uh, last year found that the cohort that was the biggest user of PEOs were CEOs aged 25 to 35. Really? So that generation very, very friendly to outsourcing, and that portends great things, obviously, for PEOs and for this industry. When you looked at that data, was that the the largest user group, yes. or just the yes. ones that adopted it the most? Uh, uh, both, both, both. So they they were the the biggest adopters in the in the surveys that we did, uh -huh. and, uh, and then obviously in the biggest user group. So uh, huh. so that's just it. Is they're very friendly to outsourcing, sure. and and it works, and. Again, every day as a new a new business or as a small business, uh, more regulations find you, and it's just so much easier to just find a PEO to just steer you through all this stuff. I'm sure that like the common sales pitch would be like, you run your business, let us do everything yeah. else. Yeah, that's normal, right? Absolutely, and also you know what, you know uh, uh, what did you get in business to do? What did you get in business to do? Yeah. Oh, I got in business to do payroll and paperwork. Right? <laughs> no, you didn't. You got in business because you had a better mousetrap. You had some great software. Yes. You had, you know, mom's muffin recipe that you wanted to get out there, right? Mom's it's like, muffins. That's 
Let's say grandma's muffins. That's <laughs> what it's you know? Sure. Uh, yeah, mom's muffins are a little chewy. Anyway, so uh, that, you know, that's what you got in business to do. You didn't get in business to do this, right? And we did. That's PEOs good. did. That's what PEOs get in business to do. Okay, so the headwinds and then the this acceptance of outsourcing, the yeah. two tailwinds, yeah. really the regulation yep. and the and the kind of normality now. Yeah, yes. And I would say that the third factor, I would say growth, which is where Napio comes in, is awareness. It's just awareness, right? And so, you know, when you and, when you and I first chatted, it was like, it's funny. Everybody we talked to was sort of an inside joke, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it happened with me too, when the headhunter called me to, and I'd spent my life on the HR policy beat. The yeah. headhunter calls me, the executive recruiter, to say, we're doing a search for the head of Napio, the head of the PEO industry. And you're like, and what's I'm, that? I'm in my house, I'm Googling, what, <laughs> what's a PO? Yeah. I didn't know, right? And so, and same thing, when I talk to you or talk to other people, folks will say, you know, I'm really sorry, I would never heard of a PEO until now, right? We're like, that's okay, big hug, it's good, don't worry about it, right? And so, uh, uh, you know, awareness is such a big part of what we do. Is right? that a challenge, is that the biggest challenge inside your industry? Is I think like, so. Like letting people know that this opportunity even absolutely. exists. Absolutely, absolutely. Because and I say to the members all the time when, when, when I, go, I spend a fair amount of time out, you know, visiting with our members, and I say to them all the time, when you're out there, and it works with me too, just anecdotally. I call right. it, you know the, the guy next to me on the airplane or the gal next to me on the airplane test, right? Right. Is so. What do you do? And you explain to people what you do, and. I, when I, I say to folks, you know, you tell your neighbors or your friends, like this is what I do, and this is what a PEO is. What is the universal reaction? The universal reaction is, that's a great idea. That's a, <laughs> I never knew about that. That's a great idea. Yeah. Like nobody ever says like, oh, that doesn't make sense. Like who would ever buy that, right? Who, right. Would, ever, who would ever engage a PEO? Everybody thinks immediately, this is great. And it is a great idea. And it's a great value proposition for a small business. So for us, it's awareness, right? Because mm -hmm. if you make 10 businesses aware that a PEO exists and these services exist, mm. it's kind of like now we've got small businesses saying to one another, you're still doing this yourself, Yeah. right? right. That's good, Right. that's good. And so that moves more businesses into this space. And it is, it's just an awareness play for us. Is, is, your, is the PEO market primarily that SMB market, the small and medium sized business or do, do you go to a, a Intel or an Amazon or some large, I mean, yeah. who's the core user, you know, yeah. in the revenue world? Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's, it's funny you ask that. It's sort of an internal debate in in, the, in, the associ in our association. It's an internal debate. Are we for small business, medium business, all business? So the data mm -hmm. would show that the, you know, the average size for a PEO client is gonna be like 20, 30, 40 employees. Right, because oh. that's when you hit the pain point. Right, you could, you can handle it all yourself. Right, at your kitchen table, and at a certain point, you can't handle it yourself. And or it's deflective you to your business. Absolutely, you can do it, but it's, it's taking you away from your business. Exactly. Right? So you're not growing because you're doing it. Absolutely, anything. and so that's the fact. So every one of our members uh, can show you a client that they've got that's got 500 or a thousand or 3,000 employees. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, that is true. Uh, so. We are everywhere now. You know, to your point, like you know, the Amazons or the Microsofts of the world, probably not. They've got an HR department bigger than you and know. They want to run it themselves. Most of our you know, companies, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do it themselves. But for mid-sized businesses and small businesses, the PEO absolutely will add value. But in there is an interesting uh, subset because you got small businesses. In the mid-sized business, uh, you know, you uh, for for years, HR people kind of perceived us as a threat. Like, oh, you're gonna take my job. Oh, I got you. But now, uh, we have a really good relationship with SHRM, which is the you know the professional yeah. society for HR people, just a yep. fabulous organization down the street from us here, uh, with, I don't know, half a million or more members. Just, they're just a powerhouse. They're we great. have one so, in our office. Oh, okay, good, yeah. all right, there you go. So, um, so we now, we've exhibited their show for like the last five years to say that we're an HR person's best friend, right? Because we do the same for an HR person in a mid-sized company Mm. that we do for a small business, which is we will let you focus on strategy, right, and the bigger People. picture things, and let us do the transactional stuff. Right. So we can partner with an HR person, and we do that in medium and larger size companies uh, as well, and that's happening, uh, that's happening everywhere every day. So I wanted to jump into the value for your members, mm -hmm. because I think that's a really important 
um, thing to like drive home. Mm -hmm. If if a member, a PEO isn't a member, mm -hmm. why should they? And then if they are a member, what's the most value that they drive out of working yeah. with this yeah. organization? That's a great question. Um, the big thing for me is it's, you know, I, I like to say we have the best PEO magazine in the world. Yeah. In the world. Right? I love it. Okay, it's the only one. Okay. <laughs> but it's the best one in the world. Yes. Right? Yes. That's the thing. So, uh, again, I go back to Sherm and, and some enormously high percentage of our members, I think it was like 80% in the last survey, mm. have some level of Sherm certification, right? Okay. So, that, and that's great. And we, we encourage that. Yep. Um, but like the specific PEO stuff, you're you're only going to get it here. Right? Well, and you if you're in get it here, and if you're in multiple states, oh, absolutely it, right. There's a level of complexity that oh, just no doubt. So so that's the second thing. So the first thing is you've got uh, PEO specific education, PEO specific information. You know, sort of sort of uh, network with one another, et cetera, which they do. Yeah. But then the the other piece of it is we have a regulatory database. So it, it's there's one member that we know. Uh, who is our former chairman, yep. who operates in only one state. Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah, Darren I Gass, met him. Right? Yep. He's we the only it. member that's in one state only. Right? Yeah. Because if you start a PEO in California tomorrow, right, yep. and you're going to operate in California, right. you get a client, that's great. And you get two or three or four or five clients, that's great. And then a week later, one of the clients calls you, Daniel, we got somebody who's going in Oregon. We're putting some salespeople in Oregon. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, we, we're opening up a branch in Nevada. Yeah. You're like, oh boy. Right. And then, hey, we got somebody over in Arizona. You're like, uh oh. So you don't drive it, they drive it. Sure. So now you're doing business in California, Nevada, Oregon, Arizona. Wherever they are. Now you and then they get bigger, your clients get bigger and they expand. And mm -hmm. now even our smallest PEOs are in probably 15 or 20 states. Right. right? So every one of those states has different uh, rules for PEOs. And you better know what those are. And if you're not a member here, you're really at, you know, you're operating at your own peril out there to hope you guessed right. So our regulatory database will tell you and all of a sudden you're now in you know, South Carolina, you can go in the regulatory the database, rules. it's okay, I better do this, here are the people I need to talk to, or I need to register or I don't, blah, blah, right. blah, and go through that. And then just the specific uh, PEO, specific education, right? It's so just the operate, how to operate yes, within yes. the different states. Yep. Okay. Yep. And also, we do all the best practices, but just targeted at a PEO, right? Not to, because sure. we're such a unique creature mm -hmm. uh, in law and in regulation and in practice that you're only going to get that information. Here. Any anybody else have a database like that? Is that does that exist at the HR world or any other? Kind no, of? no, because you know uh, I don't think anybody really has the uh, the uh, will <laughs> to put that together. It's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's it's hard, and so for us, uh, that's uh, probably one of the most popular uh, traffic areas on our website. Okay. Uh, but the most popular area on our website is the Find a PEO. Uh, uh, find website. a PEO. So it's just napio.org slash find a PEO. All one word. Napio.org slash find a PEO. And then we, we run uh, a lot of online ads. We do a lot of marketing targeted at small, medium sized businesses. Okay. And all those ads steer you to find a PEO. And we've got people coming on every day, thousands of folks come on, hit that link and search for a PEO in their state, in their area. And then those folks get, it makes them- Referrals. It, it and makes the phone members. Right, and that's, that's a great thing. We're happy for that. Do you guys track how much revenue you've driven to your members through that? That's activity? funny, no, but we have the aggregate numbers. Okay. Right, you know what I mean? So we have, we have the aggregate numbers that I just mentioned to you in terms of tracking the industry over right. the last number of years. So you just know it's doubled. growing. And so, yeah, so actually, it's, it, that's interesting, is uh, I assert, <laughs> yes. I assert that it's all me, right? No, that, is, <laughs> that, that it's Napio. I, you know, I would make the argument, uh, so, you know, our marketing budget has increased tenfold in the last six years, right? Sure. So in that same time, the industry's doubled in size. So is it coincidence or causation or correlation? You know. I would say it, it sure is a funny coincidence, <laughs> right? If it yeah. had nothing to do with it, that's a funny coincidence. I think there's causation there. But the more money we spend, the more money, our, the more business our members get. Yeah. And, and that's great. That's what we're here to do, right? I and, and you know, uh, so our, our uh, dues are based on their 941s, right? Right. So, you know, uh, the bigger they get, 
then you know their dues will increase here. So everybody benefits. That's interesting. Everybody benefits. How does how do you guys if if, it, if the dues are based on the nine forty one, it's yeah. the percentage of their kind of employed you know sort payroll. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I wonder um, I wonder how you could track the return on investment for that. Like, because that yeah. would be yeah. that would be yeah. the yeah yeah yeah. What's so funny is uh, I we there are a few uh, PEOs of significant size, only a couple, uh, who aren't members here. And right? that's why we're doing this right. video right yeah, now. We're good. talking right. to that's you right, right. right. need to now. Be members. They need to be members. And I always say to them because you know they come to our conferences. Yep. You know, yep. And I'll say to them, look around the room. All, right. All your competitors are here. All the biggest PEOs are here. All the most successful PEOs are here. Right. What do you know that they don't know? <laughs> like, what do you know about membership that they don't know? Because they are they all join and they send all their people. They come to all our stuff and they subscribe to all our stuff. I just saw a number yesterday. We've added, I don't know, a couple thousand people to our roles, people who are getting information from us just in the last two years. Wow. Right. So it's really significant. So these companies join, they tell all their people, hey, Get an account, learn. log on, get all their stuff. We've got a thing called PEO University that's just a series of videos, just a couple, three minute videos that just say, this is what this is about, this is what this is about. It covers all the topics in our right. industry. Right. And so for people who are new to one of our member companies uh, or new to the industry, you spend an hour on PEO University, you're gonna be up to speed. You know what's weird? Uh, so I'm, I'm relatively new. I've only been serving this industry for two-ish years. Mm -hmm. we're, we're going on our third year ne next month, actually. Mm -hmm. And so what I found at your conference, because I was first time yeah. attendee, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like soaking it all in. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going yeah. to everybody's booth. Yeah. Hi, what do you yeah. do? My name's Daniel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, and there's good energy there, isn't there? Right? At that conference, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you know what's wild is, um, Everybody was super friendly, which yeah. is unusual because I, I go to a lot of industry yeah. events, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's unusual to walk up to a booth and say, hi, my name's Daniel, tell me what you do, and then have them just give yeah. you yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then to realize that their competitor is right next door yeah. doing the Absolutely. exact it's same thing. Unbelievably collaborative industry. It, it is. is. Unbelievably collaborative. You will have people who are head-to-head -head competitors and somebody will call, I'm having a problem with this, like, let me help you with that. Here's what's going on. Head-to-head I mean, -head competitors. Exactly. There's just a level of collaboration in this industry that I've never seen before. And it, it's great, yeah, it's a big cocoon. It's cool. Well, my question though is how, what's, I mean, based on, there's not very many people who have a huge depth of what is a PEO, mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. every state yeah. you have members, mm -hmm. every industry you have members, mm -hmm and you collect the data and, and you do the marketing and you're doing the studies, which I yeah. found fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I wanna know for the people who are listening right now, the question is, and I want you to speak directly to them, how does a PEO double their business? If, if they're listening right now, yeah. Yeah. and it's the only thing in my, yeah. I yeah. ask every single yep. person yep. that comes to me, yep. if you yep. and I were sitting down and two yep. years we were, we were here together yep. again, Yep. What do we need to do today to double your business? Yep. And in yep. my world, it's, it's yeah. always talent, adding yeah. people and, and growing yep. it. But I'm curious what yeah. your answer would be. Yeah, that's, that's so great. And so we did, we've done two rounds of focus groups now. We, we just did uh, a couple in, in your town in, uh, in Sacramento and in Austin, Texas and in Indianapolis. And then we did a round uh, last year in three other cities. Um, so this is so great. So we've done all this research, and it's, it's all on our yeah. website, napio.org. And uh, uh, <laughs> it's right we, there. It's right there. Yeah, it's right here. You, can, you can't miss us, napio.org. So we've done all this research. Uh, you know, we go, we, we do focus groups with small businesses to yep. say, what are your hot buttons? And what's so interesting to me, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to your answer, because but this, is, it, this gives you some context. And we started our focus group seven years ago. Yep. And we had all these high-minded things we were trying to get through. We brought all these small businesses together. And we were so surprised. Biggest issue, because we we're like, you could do all this stuff and all yeah, this wonderful yeah. stuff. Biggest issue, survival. Yep. Right? We were like, wow, this is unbelievable. Growth, turnover. Those are the biggest issues. So then we have an economist. Uh, she's uh, from Princeton. She taught at Georgetown. She's got enormous integrity. She's not going to sign her name to anything that isn't true and valid and, and accurate. And we hold our breath. She goes out and she does research with PEO clients and compares them to non-PEO clients. 
And sure. we say, here's what they care about. They care about survival, growth, turnover. Go. And we hold our breath <laughs> and we wait and she takes months and months and collects all this data yep. and calls us back. And so far says, I've got good news. And why wouldn't she, right? It makes perfect intuitive sense. Right. So your survival rate is double with a PEO, right? Your growth rate, 14% higher. Your turnover rate is lower with a PEO, right? Hmm. So we did that. We went back to them to talk. They want to know how does this impact the employees? Employees, their employee satisfaction is higher. They have more faith in their company. They trust the company more if you use a PEO as compared to businesses that don't use a PEO, right? Yeah. And then we went to, to your question, I'll get to your question, about, about uh, you know, revenue and growth. Right? Yeah, yeah. Will, will you grow more? Will your revenue grow more? And, uh, and, and those are absolute yeses. So we go back to these focus groups yep. with this data. Yep. And Daniel, I'll, I'll tell you, it literally, literally too good to be true. So we go to the focus groups, we say, here's some data points on PEOs that you gotta know. And they look at it, ah, this is bull. There's just this, this, this natural skepticism in America, right? They're like, this is, this is bull. It's yeah. not, it's, it's data. And we've, yeah. got, we've got the white papers with all the data and backup is on, on our website. So we're at this one focus group in Cincinnati last year. Yeah. And you know, you sit there looking through the glass and there's this guy there, and I just remember him because I'm, I'm a musician and he looked like John Prine, who's just, I'm a fan sure. of John Prine, a musician and songwriter, it's great. He just looked like John Prine. I looked at him through the window. And they said, here's this and your revenue will double. You know, if you, if you're, you know typically PEO clients, your revenue is double. And he goes, this is bull, this is bull. And I'm looking at him. And he stops and other people start talking and talking, but I just kept watching him. I see him sort of think a little bit, yeah. you know? <laughs> and then he raises his hand again. He goes, you know what? I take back what I said. Because if I yeah. can take people off of non-revenue generating stuff and put them into revenue generating stuff, I'll bet my revenues. I, 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 it's I, gonna grow. My revenue's gonna grow. I, I totally get it. Yeah. So it took him a minute, yeah. but he's like, no, this is, this is exactly right. This is right. So it's funny as we go out there and, and carry the message to people, yep. right? The, the absolute instant reaction to all the data we've got is a little overwhelming, A, and B, skepticism, yep. right? But think about it. Think about it. Like whatever time you're spending on payroll, on you know all the HR and things that come HR, through your door, just yeah. the regular stuff that comes through your door yeah. about somebody's got this issue or that and issue or this, time. like uh, employment litigation, God forbid, like these things that are just a huge money suck. Any of these things that happen, all that, like just gone. You take you just you just contracted that out to somebody, yeah. right? Now what do you do? How are sales looking? Who do I need to go go see? Is there a new customer I need to go visit? Yeah. Hey, there's some efficiencies we can do in, again, I come out of the manufacturing world, in production, right, right. or you know, in a white collar office, or there are things we can do, is things yeah. we can do to improve our service, et cetera, right. et cetera. That's your focus. And all that gray matter and all that time that was spent on the other stuff just got taken off your plate, right? So mm -hmm. now you focus on why you got in business, right? The reason you got in business, you focus on that. And that, so cause, that by itself causes growth is your point. Absolutely, right, absolutely. And, and also the big issue these days in terms of finding the best talent, right? Mm -hmm. If you're a small business, now, you, you know, with, if you're with a PEO, you have a suite of benefits, right? Right. So you're competing against the person across the street who doesn't have a PEO, who doesn't have a suite of benefits. right? You're gonna, they're gonna come work for you. It's a right? strong value proposition for Absolutely. employers. Absolutely, right, right. But now and, back and, to my original question. And an attraction question. for employees. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. My original question yeah, yeah. is, how does a PEO double? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. What's the, what, I mean, if you're talking to, because you guys have. Oh, a, P, a PEO, I was thinking about PEO clients. I'm sorry, <laughs> that's how the PEO clients do it. Okay. I love, the, I love okay. where we went because I okay. think it gives a lot of context because when I talk to PEOs, I ask them what their value proposition mm -hmm. is and, mm -hmm. I, and we're like, well, we'll do your payroll. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, or, you know, yeah, they, yeah. or like, well, yeah. you shouldn't deal with all this minutia. We can do it better. Yeah. And I think there's some validity what you just mm -hmm. said. And I mm -hmm. think there's some, if, if I'm listening and I'm mm -hmm. a PEO, I'm taking what Pat just said, breaking it down and then pushing it down to every person yeah, yeah, in yeah. my company. Yeah. So they get yeah. a clear. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're a PEO, uh, Napio. another plug, but this is important. If you're a PEO, uh, if you're a Napio member, napio.org slash market research. Yes. So it has all this data in it. 
get it, send that link to your salespeople now. Like send it to them now because that's stuff they need to be looking at because it would cost your company uh, what it cost us <laughs> to do that uh -huh. research because you're a member, you get it for free. Is it give it to what, your salespeople? Millions so, of dollars, hundreds of thousands. Is it hundreds of thousands of dollars to get that stuff done. And right. it's a big deal. It's a big deal, and it's free to our members. Well, what's interesting is I've seen your ads because mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I don't yeah. come, I don't come to these things unless I, you know I can see digital. I, I know that there's a digital yeah. footprint, yeah. and so everything that you're talking about is clearly in Google, in Facebook. Yeah, as yeah, absolutely. Why you should yeah. use a PEO? Yeah, yeah, and they're using the messages that we know from small businesses that are top of mind, right? Period. So then that gets to your question as a PEO how you double. To me, uh, it's pretty simple in that you double by getting this stuff, getting this data, give it to your salespeople, and just make sure everybody in your town, in your county, and in your state knows that you're there and knows what you do. Right? And you can yep. target the ads to small business like we do. Yep. Uh, we're in the middle right now of what we call the October push. So you know we can't boil the ocean. We've yep. asked our members for the month of October, do something. Do yeah. something. So radio ad, uh, TV ad, uh, you know, banner ads online, something. Go make a speech at the local chamber or local NFIB. Yeah. Um, and so they're doing it. People are stepping up and it's good. It's causing some ripples out there, right? Because right. even just, you know, we've got a very short like 90 minute explainer video. Yep. And uh, 90 minutes, 90, 90 seconds. seconds. <laughs> 90 seconds. minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, very short, 90 seconds. But it's great. You click on that and that, that's what a PEO is. Like, oh, I get it. That's what a PEO is. Without so, doubt, you can actually understand the industry yeah, and it's simple yeah. for SMBs to absolutely. pull together. Yep, absolutely. But your answer is get the research, clear up your value proposition, and just get that message out yeah. to your market. Yeah, because it's awareness. It really is, is awareness. And it's funny, I was just talking to a member uh, last night um, about this, that... Uh, um, uh, one of our inspirational speakers at our conference two years ago uh, was talking to us about this and we we're like, you know, uh, you know, how do we grow the industry? And one of our members uh, is in Kansas and mm. I forget the exact numbers, but he says, you know, he's got a few hundred clients. Yep. And there are like a few thousand, like eight or nine thousand or ten thousand small businesses in Kansas. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And his point was. I don't have to leave Kansas, right? I got another you know, 9,700 uh, companies I can sign up you know, as clients keep, yeah. without leaving the state lines, right? So I think that's really it for, you know, for PEOs is the resources are here. It is all about awareness because once people know that you're there and know that a, a PEO exists, yep. it's like doing your own taxes. Like you still do your own taxes. No. You have somebody else do it, right? Of course, yeah. you know? So it's that and so it's awareness and you gotta be out there pounding away Right. Every day, having clients, you know, uh, make referrals for you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And just being out there and being visible, let people know what a PEO is. Because again, the universal reaction when people find out what a PEO is, is oh. not like, oh, that's a terrible idea. It's like, where do I sign up? Where yeah, do yeah. I find one? Right. How, um, so this is Kansas, I'm going to focus on that. Because yeah. yeah. part of what I do is I build our database, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. finding mm -hmm. out who our targets are, mm -hmm. segregating them to like, these people we want to work with, these people we would work with, mm -hmm. we don't want to work with these guys. Mm -hmm. You know, we put them into those mm -hmm. three categories. Mm -hmm. How would a PEO in Kansas figure out who those 10,000 business owners are and mm -hmm. then be able to put mm -hmm. those into a segment? Like, what's yeah, yeah. the, what are the steps? Yeah, it's interesting. There are a lot of different ways to go about it. I know we've got a, a member in Ohio who just works, I think, I think the state workers comp folks, because you have to buy workers comp through the state in Ohio as it happens. I think they, keep a list of all small mm -hmm. businesses, right? Mm -hmm. So they use them and market to them. So each state it's different. Okay. But I think people either go to the, you know, the state agency or they purchase lists from various vendors right. to target. And, and again, typically our members do target small and medium sized businesses, right? right? Every now and then you might land a whale, but I think basically that's gonna be the sweet spot. And that, that's, uh, at least anecdotally from talking to our members, that's really what they, what they target. Period. The other thing too that they do, which is really, really interesting, Daniel, is a bunch of our members, um, uh, they, how do, I, how do I put this? They, they, be, they become a resource, right? They don't say they're smart, they just are smart. And so uh, there's one I can think of in New York, one in Massachusetts. One in Massachusetts um, has a blog, um, Genesis HR, they have a blog. It's just really helpful. 
but it's really helpful. It's like, hey, don't forget there are these new requirements coming online next month, and bop, 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 bop. It's just, it's not like, hey. It's content. Give me, hey, He's yeah, creating hey, content. You know, can you, yeah, can you do this? It's like, it's just, I'm gonna be a resource. And right. so, it's so good because they are smart. I mean, uh, you know, our members, are really smart, they're experts at this stuff. Right. And so a lot of them, or they go, they speak at the local chamber meetings again, or at the local NFIBs, they do seminars like, hey, just beware. Right. Here's what's going on. Here's some, here's some, uh, you know, some uh, traps you can fall into and be careful of this stuff. And that's a great business generator for people. It's just going out there. So it's not, you don't have your hand out all the time, but you're just a resource. And people right. realize over time, you know what? Those folks at Genesis are so good on this stuff. And they just hire them. Right. At a certain point. And so we've got a bunch of our members who do that, who operate in their own communities or they'll have a blog or other social media mm -hmm. that provides information and insight that just shows how smart they are. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, they're a resource for these, you know, the small businesses will find them. You know, I, I was curious, um, most of the PEOs that I've talked to, their biggest challenge is finding great salespeople. Mm. Like, yeah, the industry is tiny. Yep. There, yep. I don't know, 800, 900 yeah, CEOs yeah, in the yeah, world, right? Yeah. And they just kind of trade around. Yeah. Or it's the founder yeah. who's doing the majority yeah. of the sale or a yeah. partner. Yep. Yeah. What's your path to getting somebody who doesn't have experience up to speed as a salesperson? And, yeah. And, and yeah. what's that look like? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. We have sort of the guru of sales, uh, Clay Kelly, who's one of our, our uh, board members, and he operates out of, uh, out of Texas. Mm. Uh, and he's a, a, one of the, the, sort of the premier um, sales consultants in the industry. So this is what he does for a living. But you know, you've got, I, I think the answer's all over the board. You have a bunch of people who work through brokers' networks. Yep. So they have brokers sell for them. You have some who only will hire people who come from the industry. Have experience. And there are companies who say, no, I don't want people who come from the industry. I want good salespeople, and we'll teach them about the industry, right? Right. So you've got different schools of thought out there. Mm. But the idea, obviously, is to get good salespeople who can get through the door and explain the value proposition. But right? those are the That's three it, major right? channels. I would the say broker. really brokers, people inside the industry, and people outside the industry. And again, there, there are companies who don't hire salespeople from inside the industry. Right. It's like, we're just gonna, we're gonna teach them. We're gonna train them. Right, we're gonna train them up. Yeah. What's that learning curve if, if somebody hire, like is it a one year ramp up? Is it yeah. a three year ramp yeah, up? That's a good question. How I long did it take it, you? Oh, I'm, I've been here eight years, I'm still at it. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the basic building blocks they can probably learn, you know, uh, you know pretty Fast. quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then from there, the nuances and the technicalities probably take a, a whole lot longer to learn. But typically, uh, you know, actually I just talked to one of our members in Florida, it was a, a very new salesperson, but they're being mentored by a more senior person right. who, you know, got Help them in them. and helped them steer through their first sale and do stuff that way. So I think that's probably more common. Cool. All right. So we've covered everything that's important. I think we have. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, how, the industrial revolution. Well, we, we really <laughs> covered that. Um, what, what would somebody do if they wanted to go deeper or learn more or understand it, you know, in an in-depth yeah. way of joining Napio oh, and yeah, yeah. really taking advantage Again, of that? Again, uh, our website, napio.org, uh, there's a, a link of how to join. There's a link with all our resources on it. You know, uh, I am a believer in um, uh, putting a lot of stuff outside the fence, right? So it's available for the public. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff out there that is publicly available. But like our research, uh, that's expensive, our members paid for that, yeah, you know? Yeah. So you gotta be a member to get that, right? That's something I'm not gonna give away for free because I think that kind of devalues uh, our members. Who are know, paying. Their, their contribution, literally, their, their, their monetary and other contributions. So, but if you come to the website, even as a non-member, there's a lot of stuff there. The regulatory database, obviously, is just for members only. Right. But there's a lot of resources there. You can sort of browse around and look around and see what you, you know, uh, yeah. uh, you know uh, what's there for you. But again, as a PEO, I can't imagine, and it's funny, one of our uh, industry lawyers, uh, a couple of years ago, after Obamacare passed, uh, I, was, uh, I was with him in Florida, and he came up to a large non-member at the time who's since joined, and said to him, why on earth would you want to go through this on your own? Right? Figuring out Obamacare right. and its implications for PEOs. Like, wh why and how would you go through this on your own? Like these guys have all the resources. They've done it all. They've done right. all the thinking, all the working on this stuff. Right. So uh, it's good. And also I think for larger PEOs, and there aren't very many large PEOs that aren't members of ours, right? Yep. I mean, I literally can name uh, less than one hand. Um, but also like the bigger you get, 
uh, for your peers and for the private equity community, we're attracting this, this space, this industry is uh, attracting a lot of private equity interest and money, or mm. the venture capital industry, uh, you know, people, folks, you know, they wonder, like, why aren't you a member of your trade association? Like every, everybody, all the, all the big whales are in. Like everybody's in, right. they see value, they're part of the League of Nations. You just don't want to be an outlier. Right? It's just not a good look. Sure. Addition, you know, if we provided no value, <laughs> you'd still want to be a member because it's, it's a bad look to be the outlier, outlier yeah. right? And, and, uh, but we do provide a lot of value to people who are in there. And, and folks who aren't in for the life of me, I don't know how they, how they steer through it. Again, we've got a couple who've gone in and out, in and out, and uh, the folks who go out, you know, because the CEO says we're out, we hear from everybody else in the company <laughs> throughout the year, everybody else who's on our lists for right. state government affairs, federal government affairs, regulatory updates, you know, sure. uh, the marketing, communications, everything. We hear from everybody else in the company throughout the year, like, you know, why aren't we members? <laughs> and why can't we access this stuff? And I told my CEO we really need to join. We're like, just keep working on it, keep working yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah. But it's not that big a problem for us, because again, we only have a, you know, just a couple outliers. What's uh, the out future? What's luckily. the What's the future? Like, what, what should members and this industry look forward to seeing from Napio over the yeah, next three uh, to five? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's funny, Daniel. As, 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 uh, as um, you know, uh, b as bad as this answer is about to be, uh, more of the same. More of the same, right? And, and, and uh, we, had a, uh, we, we have an outside group that's helping us with our marketing. Yep. And they're great. They're called LGND. It's a firm in DC, highly recommended by the US Chamber that I'm very active in. And they've just done phenomenal work. And at the conference, they rolled out a bunch of stuff. Great work. And so we had a call with them last week with yep. Terry Carruthers, who's our head of marketing and communications. Yep. And they're great, and they're creative, and they're brilliant. Yep. And they said, hey, we think next year we need to do step five and step six and step seven and eight and nine and ten and i said you know what we need to do step one over and over and over again because right. step one is awareness yeah right and their ideas were great and i said let's put those aside because we'll use those someday yeah but they were fancier they were once everybody knows what a peo is let's do this stuff and that's but stuff. No, not like, everybody knows right. yeah they were far away and we you know for the it's for the uh, 10 to 99 market you know, there yep. are 10 to 99 employees, we've got 15% of that market, right? 15%. Wow. Wow. So we got a long way to go just in that market. Yeah. So my view is more of the same. Like we will continue to pound and pound and pound and pound away. And it is just anecdotal. Like uh, we, audit, we, we interviewed some uh, audit firms last week. We have an audit firm yep. and periodically you have to go through and, and, and you know, in, you know, uh, audition some others. And we had four or five audit firms come through last week. It's just anecdotal. And every one of them, they work mostly in the SMB space. Every one of them said, kind of the apologetic, gee, I didn't know what a PEO was. That's okay, <laughs> big hug, big hug. And they said, but you know, a couple of years ago, but they said, now a bunch of our clients are using PEO, PEOs. Right. So unsolicited, every one of the firms that came in said, you know, a lot more of my clients are using PEOs, right? Yeah. The gal next to me on the airplane test, more and more people are saying, oh, I know what a PEO is. Sure. It's good. So the awareness is building. So for us, we, we are just going to keep pounding and pounding and pounding away on this is what a PEO is and mm -hmm. this is what it does, right? And if you want to find one, go to nabio.org slash find a PEO. And people are clicking by the thousands, by the millions on that link. Mm. And that's good. And some percentage of those are converting into PEO clients, right? Some are thinking about it and will convert into yeah, PEO yeah. clients down the road. But for us, it's going to be awareness, you know, as far as I can see, frankly. You know, I would love to tell you that I can see, a, you know, a year or two from now where everyone's using a PEO and we're going to some other right. message. Right. But for right now, that's it. It's for the foreseeable future. We are going to just continue to pound and pound away mm. on here's what, it, here's what a PEO is yep. and here's what we do. Right. Oh, the other thing I should mention before we leave, so the, um, of all the messages, it's yeah. so funny, of all the messages for the uh, focus groups, yep. that we put all the data, all the stuff they didn't believe, all that stuff, which yeah. again, it's factual, it's data. Um, the message that they all glommed onto is yep. just, just as we were doing all this uh, empirical work with our economist, I said to her, hey, while you're under the hood and interviewing all these PEO clients, I'd just be interested to know, be interested to know how many of them would recommend a PEO to another small business? Yeah. Wonder, what's, what's the satisfaction rate? Like right. 
sixty percent? Like, how many? If you're a PEO client, would you recommend a PEO to another small business? Ninety-eight percent. So great. Which to me was a better number than a hundred percent because a yeah. hundred sounds like BS. Right, right. <laughs> ninety-eight is real. That's a real number. And we did it again, and it came up ninety-eight percent again. And so in the focus groups, that mattered. Isn't it funny? That mattered. So the small businesses are like, yeah, my revenue will increase, that's BS, and this, that's BS, we don't believe that, we're gonna grow, you know, all the stuff that they were skeptical about. When they saw that, they said, huh, that's good. It's like, because social proof matters. Yes, it's, yes. And it's like if a friend tells me or somebody who's right? in business like me, yep. it's, it's ridiculous exactly how, right. how important that that's is That's exactly right. And so it was so interesting to me that that was the big flag for them. It's a five-star review. Like Absolutely every, right. Everybody wants the five. From a peer. From right. a peer. Yeah, right. A, a five-star review from somebody you trust. Right. That's so interesting. It's interesting. And so that data is out there and that's great and it's true. It has the additional benefit of being true that 98% of current PEO customers would recommend one to another small business. That's terrific. Uh, mic drop right there. All right. Boom. <laughs> that's it. Pat. All right, buddy. Thanks, Thank man. you. It's good. This has been fun. Thanks. Thanks. See ya.